So what you see here is a plane with a checkerboard. We have lots and lots of objects in the air which change their shape and size. They're bending and they're tilting. And we have a camera motion which always kind of keeps them in focus. It's a very meditative animation, I think. Not too fast, not too slow. Always things changing, so you can kind of, when you're at the dentist's, you can just watch this and find it into a peaceful mood. So um, I'll show you how I did this. It's nothing spectacular, really, but it's a very principal thing. By the way, this is a view of Maya with the top front side and perspective window and we can use any window for any other camera it's a view at the scene and uh, later on in this tutorial we'll look through the camera uh, using one of the other uh, windows other than the perspective because the perspective obviously is our main uh, window uh, and the brief uh, touching of the spacebar uh, while hovering with the mouse over that window um, makes this uh, enlarges this window here the side for example and brief uh, punch of the uh, spacebar back here you probably know all this I just wanted to get rid of it in my head uh, okay geometry we need uh, something to plant the whole scene onto uh, and that's obviously the most interesting <laughs> and most simple thing is a polygon plane uh, we might need texturing later we don't want to see the grid anymore so this is the first step then let's create a torus and here in the attribute editor you have the radius which we will enlarge and the section radius as well make it like this and we move it up a little bit and we rotate it rotate it slightly so that's what we have also in order to render it we need a light this time we well go to go for a physical sky uh, which always has the problem with the horizon but we'll get uh, get this fixed so we render the scene now and we have this nice blue tint coming from the blue sky and here we can in the attribute editor we can change the elevation of the sun higher sun uh, the uh, rotation uh, around the scene and the intensity of course we can make it a little bit brighter so this is what we have Arnold renders the scene just all right but I want to get to xgen and I pick the torus and here is xgen all the menus and uh, most of the options in XGENs are here and we start from the very left if you don't find it here in the tabs you find it under modeling generate and the whole section here starting here until I guess here no groom editor that's still XGEN so I think until here um, uh, it's uh, it's about xgen so let's start with this one we just click here and we get the option to create a new description that's what we're going for with this uh, torus selected we create a new description probably in your case it's called description number one here it's three and it's a new collection it's called collection three and uh, we go for um, spheres use uh, for use as pebbles uh, marbles or other round uh, objects uh, well or we can go for cards used for scales or other flat textures we randomly uh, distribute them across the surface and we use attributes controlled by expressions which we don't care about in this tutorial and create um, our geometry now it's an instance geometry and we don't see it properly because uh, the new geom the XGen geometry covers the torus that's what it's supposed to do so uh, let's 
uh, select the torus and control H hides the torus. So this is our uh, XGen well, a product now. Um, here in the outliner you see collection, below that in the hierarchy description, below that a polygon torus description. So it's not a polygon torus anymore, it's something, well, which is controlled here. And the main reason I'm doing this tutorial is because I thought, why can we not keyframe the length attribute, for example, uh, because when I right mouse click here, I see select all and maybe cut, copy, etc., but no keyframing. We'll get to that, uh, we'll return to that problem in a second. It isn't a problem really, but I needed the, uh, the Maya area support in order to <laughs> find this uh, really stupid of my humble self. Uh, the length uh, is this here. We can make them very short, like this. We can change the width, like this. Very nice. The tilt. And the tilt is actually what we're going to animate now. And the trick is very simple. Um, it's uh, slightly embarrassing. Uh, instead of clicking here, you click here. And here you have set key. I'm really sorry for this. Uh, so at frame one, I want to set the key for the uh, tilt in V here. Uh, and at the end of the animation, which I'll set to say 500 frames, I want it to be the same. So again, here set key. I have two keys now, one at frame one and one at frame 500. And uh, I do the same thing in the middle, set a key, so I have nothing happens. It's it's uh, just the same keyframes, but in between here I can play with them now, like this, set key, and then I go here sort of in the middle, and make this tilt here, set key. Now the animation looks like this. It's a very mild effect, but a very nice effect. Let's add some other animations here. The bend. That's what the bend does. We need to get a little bit close in order to see how it works. It bends the individual tiles, see? From one side to the other side. So let's set a keyframe here for the bend. And the same keyframe here for the bend. And here we want to change the bend, going from this side to the other side and set another key. So the animation we have now is this, and now I think we can need or use a longer, uh, a longer tile here, uh, a length, set a key. Um, right here is frame 123. This is just random. You can do it uh, completely differently if you like. And uh, I set the same keyframe here. And in between, a very harsh change, like making them very long, and set another key here. Now we have a dramatic uh, moment in the first third of the animation right now. And it goes back that it behaves nicely and fine again okay so the next thing is we want to get into that thing and make a camera rotate within the torus okay we go to curves and surfaces and now we need the top window this is what we see in the top window actually a very nice view we create a circle and we scale the circle up so it's just about in the center of that torus. Torus does funny things, of course, when we run the animation here, but the um, circle stays sort of in the middle. Now, of course, we need to rotate it, just as we did with the torus, like this. This may be a little bit too much. 
and make it a little bit higher. That looks quite nice. And now we need a new camera. And uh, well, I use this window for the new camera. Create cameras camera. So the camera sits here. Now I press the spacebar and hold the spacebar. And here I have panels. I actually could have done it here as well, but I like the hotbox for this purpose. I go to panels perspective and here I have two options for um, perspective cameras and one is the new camera one. So now I'm looking through camera one, which in that scene here sits in the middle of the scene and is half in the ground and well, now we'll attach it to the circle. The attachment um, is an animation thing, so we need to go to animation here and uh, the order to select it is the following. We need to select the object which we want to constrain, which is the camera first and finally could Actually, we could select several objects, but finally, and that's crucial, we'll select the path uh, to um, fix that object onto that path. So the, the path is the NURB circle, so we have the camera selected, and now we shift select the NURBS circle. And now we go to constrain, which we find when only when we're in animation here, constrain, and here are the motion paths and we attach the camera to the motion path. And the camera of course jumps to the motion path but it doesn't look into the proper direction because we want to orient it towards that side. Now how do we fix this? Well, uh, you go to the attribute editor which is here and here you have angle of view, focal length, etc. That's the camera parameters. But here you have a motion path tab. And this gives you all the data about the camera motion. Camera currently goes like this. Okay. Um, because we had a, a playback range of 500 frames, we have a uh, a motion path now which lasts 500 frames and um, we have uh, the option to f make the camera follow the path well that's what we did and here we have the front axis and how about this is this nice so the camera is exactly pointing to the uh, circle and it's probably going backwards yes it is which doesn't matter at all. I think it's quite a nice thing to do. So that's the camera motion now. Now when it approaches the end it will slow down. Now you see it's slowing down already and it slows down further to zero and then it jumps to the beginning and it increases its speed. If we don't want that, uh, if we want a constant loop here, we would typically with a motion path here in the attribute editor, select the motion path and then go to the window which is called the graph editor. It's an animation uh, editor because it has to do with animation. So the graph editor is here and the motion path shows us this um, curve. The curve slowly starts going up and accelerates and here it slows down. The key um, icon here for making it uh, straight is this one. So now uh, the camera will just loop without stopping at the beginning of the curve. So we're almost there. We will look through the camera now, which is here, and render the view. Arnold renders something strange. Why is that? Because we're still rendering the perspective view. We need to render the camera shape. And this is the camera shape. Here we have the black horizon. Actually 
I won't do anything about it right now. I just leave it there. Uh, typically, you would lift the borders of your plane a little bit so we don't see that black line. But uh, it really doesn't matter for this for the purpose of this uh, tutorial. Also, we might add a little bit of motion blur, which I'll do in a second. But um, let's see how the animation works now. This is our camera rotation. It sees the X-Gen turbulences, which we animated at the beginning of this tutorial. Now it goes up a little bit. So it's very mild. Now it gets uh, a little bit more interesting here. If we render it now, this is what we see because the camera tilts a little bit further down. We don't see m m that much of the horizon line, the black horizon line. We see wonderful shadows. And please consider that th there's only one light in the scene and Arnold renders it perfectly. So to finish this tutorial, I will go to the render settings in order to render some motion blur. Uh, you don't find it under Arnold, you don't find it under the camera, you find it here in the render parameters, in the render settings. The render settings have a tab for common, which uh, shows you, for example, what format you are rendering, full, um, full uh, HD 1280 uh, would be this size, for example. Uh, but we want to go to Arnold, Motion Blur, and enable. And Arnold renders the motion blur straight away. It takes a few seconds of course. Now it's much more uh, to render here because it has to consider the frame before and the frame after. And you see the um, objects which are further away from us, from the camera, like here, they are blurred less and uh, the turbulences, of course, here close to the camera are much more drastic. That's why they are blurred much more, including the shadow, by the way. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this and you start playing with X-Gen, keyframing, Arnold rendering, the physical sky and the motion path for nice camera motions.